captain has switched on the fasten seatbelt sign, please return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. Was the last thing you heard from the captain before people flew out of their seats and got knocked out cold on the roof. You can't comprehend what is happening. You were in shock. Sirens flare. People scream. People cry. Oxygen masks drop from the ceiling as you realize you're about to leave the mines. You hear roaring screech from the center of the crack. The plane splits in two. You start to feel lightheaded. Then all you see is black. Until you wake up with sand below your feet. You wonder, how did I survive that? How did 71 total people survive that? And that, my friends, is the question we'll be answering today. So buckle up, don't get carried away, as we answer the question, can you survive lost? Well, according to BBC, also known as Big British it states that found that more than 95% of aircraft passengers survived accidents, including 55 in the most serious incidents. So the odds of them surviving the crash were surprisingly high, 95%. A plane crash in New Mexico killed, wait, am I reading this right? Zero people. All 103 passengers made it out on that flight alive. And I mean, look at that crash. Another source from Big Bear, I mean BBC, states that three conditions for surviving a plane crash. That's what this point is. Whether the forces encountered by human passengers are within the limits of human tolerance. This is saying that if humans can support the crash, let's say that someone throws a baseball at your face. Chances are you would survive, but you would have scars and bruises. Now, if someone threw a bowling ball or a coconut at that same speed at your head, your head's gonna fall off. That is human tolerance. The second part is whether structures surrounding them, I mean, like the plane, remain intact. In that case, the plane was still intact. At least, the part of it on the island was. Even though there is much wreckage, we can see the passenger part of the craft was still intact. But how? That will be the next question, as we are answering three questions in this video. The third point, BBC states that whether the post-crash environment present to the immediate threat to occupants or rescuers. That is saying that if the plane crashes where the plane can survive a fall, the passenger and crew have a chance of surviving. I'm going to show a picture on screen of crashes and land so you can see. So you can see that even on land, passengers are still okay. Now we've discussed the three things. Now we can move on to the next point. This point is a hard one. After going on a calculator and seeing how high up the plane was and how many seconds it took to fall down, I'm using this footage from Season 2, Episode 7, when we first discover the back half of the plane and how they survived. So after getting the result on the calculator, it was pretty shocking. It said that it was falling about a thousand miles per hour. <laughs> and that doesn't sound right at all, because according to the Swiss Air Flight 111's crash, it disintegrated, crashing to the ocean at a speed of 345 miles per hour. So my new estimate is either 150 miles per hour, or the plane was made out of some strong metal, or it landed on its belly. I will let you decide for yourself. Here's Jim R's footage I found on YouTube of the tail crashing. So now we know how fast the plane crashed. Could you survive it? The tail section depends on if you can swim or not, because most of the people drowned if they couldn't swim. The middle section depends on where you sat. In the pilot section, well, hard luck. Hope you did not book first class. First class, because nobody survived that part. 
of the plane besides the pilot that miraculously survived but died to the smoke monster after a short conversation with Jack and Kate. The pilot did tell Jack and Kate we were a thousand miles off course when turning to go to Fiji. After putting some numbers into a calculator, I figured out that six hours six hours in which is how far out the plane was. Now times 500 miles per hour, which is about the average speed the plane goes, I got that the plane was about 3,000 miles out when it started to hit its... So I put, I went into Google Earth, put those measurements in to find a circle where the island could be. It's just a radius. I could not find any islands that were uninhabited or um, looked like the island from Lost, but if you want to try and find an island that is a little populated, has a big island and a smaller island close to it, or find an island that range looks like the island from Lost, and uh, no, don't say Hawaii where the film took place, um, but I know the island's not real, but I just think it'd be cool if we found an island that looked like the island from Lost. So after so much research and pain, I can finally answer the question about can you survive loss? The answer depends on who you are, who Jacob likes. The plane crash was not Jacob's fault, but he chose who lives and who dies. If Jacob likes you, enjoy your time on the island. If Jacob does not like you, be ready to see black smoke on your tail. Anyways, that wraps up today's video. Make sure to like and please smash subscribe or Smoke Monster smash you. <laughs>